Hello everybody, welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around fantasy Premier League. My name's Serge. My name is James. Last weekend. All right, boss, you? It was not too bad. The weather got a bit better. I managed to uh, mow the lawn. I've been telling my missus, for, my, my excuse for weeks has been, it's too wet, love. It's too wet. I had to get the lawnmower out and uh, mow the lawn. It was, it was all right. It was pretty decent, pretty decent weekend. When we uh, talk about FPL, James, one of my things is... I only like to play the cards after they've been dealt. I don't like thinking about ifs and buts, might be maybes, this, that, and the other. The cards have been dealt now. Nearly. Pretty, pretty much. Nearly, yeah. Pretty nearly, much. Yeah. The cards have been dealt now, so I'm paying attention today. Oh, I'm okay. To You're here, are you? Well, I know what the fixtures are going to be, as opposed to speculation of the nation. Okay. Cool. Cool. What did you do at the weekend? You had uh, family stuff going Yeah, on. it was uh, father-in-law's 70th, uh, hence the fact I, I missed the FPL Juice 5 aside. Oh, yes. Of which we lost in the final. We lost in the final. What, what, a, what a day. We should probably talk about that. Should we kick off with that? Go. Okay. We've got to you give a shout-out to uh, Ash, Nick, and James, and Jesse, um, who put on the five-a-side, the second inaugural five-a-side uh, tournament. Yeah, and we lost... To a golden goal in literally the last three seconds of extra time in the final, having stormed the tournament up until then. But what a what a uh, firstly, let's just cover off the football and then uh, a few shouts. We group stages three nil, five nil, four two, four two, four one, five nil in the semi finals. So you're thinking we've we've been playing on fire, and what they do at the five aside to mix it up is um, they give you chips, right? Like FPL chips. So they had a new chip this year, free hit. You get a free shot on a five-a-side pitch from your own penalty spot into the opposition goal. No one in the way, but it's got to go in without bouncing. Okay. <laughs> I don't think anyone... I think there might have been one team that played it that scored it. Um, extra man for two minutes. Uh, and as Manchild uh, saw when he saw that chip, extra man for two minutes, it's all fun and games until his wife pulls it out or his girlfriend pulls it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that was probably the highlight of the morning. Um, next, uh, next goal counts double. And uh, didn't see it, chips. So, obviously, teams are playing different chips to try and get an advantage. So it's not a straight, uh, straight 5v5. It's a bit of fun. It's, it's what is light-hearted. Um, shout out to FPL Focal, Oscar. His team made it through to the final. And last year we beat them in the semis and there was still still some unfinished business, I think, for them. That <clears throat> We beat them, obviously, 3-0 in the opening group stage game as well. Um, and they did beat us 1-0 in the final. We went into the final, both teams, Focals and ours, with all four chips in hand. And the problem then is like, it becomes a game of cat and mouse now. It's not a game of, like, let's just play 5v5. Um, and I did try and uh, negotiate with Focal. Just tear up the chips, mate. Let's just settle it like men. Not that I'm one of the men on the pitch, mate, to be fair. Um, you call in Focal, not a man. Do you know how many followers he, he's got? He, he said <laughs> that they would need the chips possibly maybe to beat us and that he wasn't going to take my offer. Let's all <laughs> tear the chips up. Just saying. Uh, having said that, in the end, the chips became irrelevant because none of them affected the, uh, the result of the game. Um, and yes, unfortunately, they pipped us in the last second of like five seconds to go and uh, unfortunately we lost. But big shout out to the, to the, to the team that repped us, uh, Sham and Elliot and Sergey, Kevin downstairs, all on fire, gun under 21s, um, <laughs> Joe, Mike and uh, Keith, FPL Brentford. I don't know, he's it's, it's Brentford. Um, nice. Yeah, so, and it was good fun and all, everyone else that was out there as well. There was a uh, Black Boxes crew were there. Um, We've obviously got a few issues now in that Pete from FPL team. You know your planet FPL. Yeah, in your I messaged him. I messaged him. Books. Adam 35 who, although he's dyed his hair bleach blonde now, so yeah, I'm not he, even sure if we want him. He's in a gooner. I'm not bothered about him. He, they're all playing for black box, you know. And uh, you know black box played five, lost five. So the transfer <laughs> window is opening before Pete. the next tournament. Come on, come on over, Pete. Come on over. Uh, and obviously, we lost Bruno from the last tournament, who is... is He's handy, player. Bruno. So, He's very good. So look, yeah, good fun. Just go give him a shout-out, the Juice Boys, because they put a lot of effort into creating fun for the community. It's just not about FPL or anything like that. It's just getting together, having a laugh. We had a few drinks at the end. Uh, yeah, shout-out. But we lost our title, having played well, and it's just 
shows, right? You get to the end. And uh, it didn't become a, it became a little bit nervy. I'll have to tension. make sure I get get involved for the next one. Yeah, I mean, uh, long rehab and recovery. Are on oh, the I don't way, know about right? playing because I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to. But might take over the coaching, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Tuck in, tuck in, tuck press, in, tuck in, press, press, man on, stuck in. <laughs> Let him know you're there. I had all the catchphrases ready, mate. All the catchphrases ready. So yeah, shout out to them boys. Give them a shout out on FPL Juice. We're going on Juice in May. Um, again so. might not be oh okay well if Chelsea play Tottenham that night I won't be there ah uh, okay <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not worried about Chelsea Tottenham that's Which unlikely by the way it was like a segue are Possibly. we talking about fixtures I think um, this episode is probably just about the final really chip yeah heavy pod we'll talk about it on upcoming shows when we know a little bit more but this is the final kind of chip heavy the run-in is here. Everybody's kind of waiting to know, right, okay, we can finally put at least 80, 90% of our strategy together. Yep. Um, because the doubles for 34 have been announced. Yep. We've just got a handful for 37 and then maybe one straggler fixture. The Two. Chelsea Tottenham game, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, this is very much decision time now. So this is more like, right, let, let's, let's compare ideas and choose our paths. Oh, do you know what? Before... We, I should say congratulations to Focal and Oscar and those boys for winning. Like I don't want to feel I, like I'm I think you did do that. Right, good. I didn't want to come across as bitter, you know, and, uh, that I, we lost. Okay. To, to them, but cool. You're good. You're good. Yeah, You'll yeah. be all right. Congratulations, Oscar and Focal. And, Cheers. Uh, Congrats. I'll see you next time, lads. Yes. Um, yes. We've got the big double game week 34. When I sat here last week, I said, look, there was seven teams who could double in 34 and it's just equally as likely as this stage that it will become zero. By the time we'd got to sort of Thursday morning, there was very large noises about Crystal Palace and Newcastle specifically going into game week 34, which was one of the games that was going to flip everything the other way around, basically. Right. Um, by the time I did my stream on Friday, this is what we thought it would be with seven doublers in 34. That's the way it's panned out. However, it's not gone exactly as any of us predicted because I don't think any of us were hypothesising that Tottenham wouldn't play at all. And for 34 specifically, that's the immediate headline because that's the surprising one, that neither Tottenham's game against either Chelsea or Manchester City has been arranged into game week 34. Tottenham will blank. We, we knew there was a small possibility that was the case, but it just didn't make any sense. Yep. And it still doesn't make any sense. So... Game week 34, we are confirmed. Seven teams with doubles. Arsenal will play Wolves away and Chelsea at home. Bournemouth will play Villa away and Wolves away. Crystal Palace will play West Ham at home and Newcastle at home. Everton will play Nottingham Forest and Liverpool at home. Liverpool will play Fulham and Everton away. Common sense has prevailed. They, Chef didn't, they didn't leave it till the last No, week. no, no, no. Uh, Chef, <laughs> there's a lot of Everton fans were messaging me last week saying, we really don't want that at the end. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I know. Uh, Sheffield United yep. will play Burnley at home and Manchester United away and Wolves will play Bournemouth and Arsenal at home. From that, we can presume at this stage that Brighton, Chelsea, Manchester City, Manchester United, Newcastle and Tottenham will all double in game week 37. However, the lack of the Tottenham game has confused things because I think we very much thought with Brighton going out of Europe to Roma that Brighton and Chelsea would become the odd fixture. I think it was right for everybody to think that. We would now assume that Brighton will double in 37. I'm not convinced that that's a certainty. It's certainly what I'm projecting at the moment. But I'm not, not convinced that Brighton and Chelsea won't still just land into 35 or, or 36. Should that happen, we could be looking at a treble game week here at the end. So, the current projection for the Chelsea-Tottenham game, which now becomes the odd one out, because those two teams both have two games to rearrange, is that it will go in 36 rather than 35. Why 36? Well, it just gives a little bit more time from game week 33 to 36 to arrange the game. Why is 33 important? Well, in that midweek, you've got the conclusion of the European quarterfinals. Right. Because Manchester City and Arsenal are on the same side of the draw, they can know at that point which night an English team won't play. Right. So there's two weeks from the midweek, 33 to 35. There's obviously yep. an extra week, 33 to 36. 36 yep. It's also Chelsea and Tottenham is two London teams. So if you are going to leave a fixture too late, it's a better one to leave too late rather than 
Manchester City to Brighton. Is um is Chelsea Tottenham a TV pick fixture? Yes. Right. So, so they all have a. Uh, it, it's likely that it will be showed. Yes, yeah, Sky. So, <laughs> so Sky would want to be cheeky and go against any Champions League. Fixtures? Well, they won't go against the Man City Arsenal Champions League semi final. It, it will be nah. the odd night out. Now, if City and Arsenal play on the Wednesday. Um, in that that 36 weeks. So if, if one of them plays and the semi-finals the Wednesday, you think, right, Chelsea, Tottenham on, on the Tuesday night. But Tottenham are almost definitely going to have to play at Liverpool on the Sunday before. And this might push it in the 37. Right. I don't think it's improbable. Um, a scenario where Chelsea... Would they, would they bring forward the Brighton-Chelsea game instead then to avoid it being a... But then you've still got three Tottenham games. Yeah, okay. I'd From that a, point on. It a, a treble game week for you. Yes. Yeah. It could be that it's Brighton-Chelsea in the midweek of 36, for example, yeah. And then you have Tottenham play Burnley on the Friday night and Nottingham Forest play Chelsea on the Friday night. Chelsea-Tottenham play each other on the Monday. Brighton and Chelsea on the Thursday. Tottenham and Man City on the Thursday. There's your treble game week for both. Right. Now, that doesn't maximise the possibilities of what you do with television coverage. But it's also not improbable that they could move something like Villa v Liverpool from the weekend to the Tuesday night. If that's the sort of thing that they want to do, perhaps move that fixture to the Monday night. Uh, that, that treble game week at the end doesn't maximise the exposure of the amount of games they want to show at the end. What we do know is Sky partly won the battle with TNT because Arsenal and Chelsea is in 34 rather than 37. They kind of won that battle, but it didn't necessarily win the war. Because now they're, they're looking at a possible schedule where they might have to show Brighton against Manchester City on the same evening as Everton against Liverpool. So they're winning, but they're losing, and they might lose a night at the end because they haven't right. put a Tottenham game in now. They couldn't put Tottenham Man City on the Thursday because um, Tottenham play Arsenal, and that might have to get moved to the Saturday. Similar with Man City's fixture at Forest in 35. And they couldn't put Everton Liverpool in the, on the Thursday night because TNT picked up West Ham against Liverpool for the Saturday. Right. So this is what I talk about. They play games with each other. Ian Parrin's going to guest on my Skypod next on our, our Skypod next Wednesday, and uh, we'll talk about that more then. Cool. So at least now we know definitively thirty-four. I think for thirty-seven, you just need to be aware. I would say a treble game week is about five to ten percent probability, but it's certainly more than sort of the one percent that wasn't even worth mentioning this time last week. Chelsea Tottenham will probably go into thirty-six. I think what we can do now is split the 20 teams into three groups, essentially. The non-doublers, the 34 doublers, and obviously the 37 doublers. So, of the seven teams who don't double at all, I can see, in terms of future investment, doesn't mean you have to sell these players immediately, but I can see no reason to buy any Luton player for the rest of this season. Yep. I think for Burnley, you could maybe make a case for an enabler on final day when they play not in the Forest. For Forest themselves, the next two fixtures are decent. It's Palace at home, Fulham at home. And also for those perhaps free hitting in 37, they do have Sheffield United in 36 away and Burnley away in 38. So if you're looking for something to punt for two weeks and free hit in 37, that might keep them in mind. Uh, for West Ham, a player might be part of the thinking for free hitters in 37 as a single fixture at home to Luton. Yep. Otherwise, can't see any reason for investment. Similarly with Villa now, I wouldn't rule out, say, Ollie Watkins for 34 free hitters with Bournemouth at home. But I think for most people, if Watkins gets sold, that will be the end of it. For Fulham, next to a Sheffield United and not in a Forest away, I think particularly Muniz might enable some moves towards, say, Mo Salah, for example. Yep. Their last four for those three hitting in 37, quite decent as well. Palace, Brentford, Luton, the other fixtures around them playing Manchester City in 37. So if you're looking for something for the final three weeks, if you're free hitting 37, Fulham might come into play. But um, I mean, then you may as well, you could even potentially go early and just leave Muniz in all the way through. Absolutely. As yeah. your enabler. Yeah, absolutely. That seems interesting. We, we've spoke previously about, for those who are going to cover 34 and 37, or perhaps people like me who don't have a bench boost left, yeah. someone like Muniz might be more interested that you just leave him on the bench in 34 and 37 respectively. Yeah. For Brentford, they're the one of the seven teams who don't have a double left who I think might still be interesting. 
and they'll fall into one particular ca- category as well that I think is interesting. And it's a category of free hit 34, wild card 35. And that's because they play Sheffield United at home in game week 33. So 33 is your dead end. Brentford at home to Sheffield United for the likes of Tony. A fit again, Bumo. Yep. A defensive player I don't think would be ruled out. And their fixtures till the end for those carrying through, again, not too bad. Their final run of fixtures from that Sheffield United game is pretty good. But it's United, Brighton, Villa, the next three, which for someone like Tony is not disastrous anyway. Yeah, two of those are at home as well. United and Brighton are at, uh, at home. But largely, obviously, most people are going to focus their attention away from those seven teams and towards the 13 teams that still have doublers left. Some key points on the teams that will double in 34. Uh, for Arsenal, Luton at home in 31, if you're going without, looks like the fixture that's a little bit scary prior to the 34 double of Wolves and Chelsea. Um, Arsenal also have Bournemouth at home in 36 and Everton at home in 38. It's Tottenham and Manchester United away respectively in 35 and 37, where you feel you can live without. The Bournemouth yeah, at home I mean, 36 and Everton 38 are a bit more scary. I think Tottenham away, do you always say you give up chances? Yeah, I was not to say you can't have them, just saying. And then Man United away, like if I had to back, if Arsenal were in the title race and they got to go to Old Trafford and get a result, they're that much better than Manchester United that they could. So they don't fill me with, I could. I, I think I'd want a bit of Arsenal for them to carry through. So Arsenal looking pretty interesting now from, from 34 onwards. Um, for Bournemouth, I have them third on my ticker for game weeks 30 to 35. So there's still reason to hold interest and have a look over this period, particularly mm. for the likes of Dominic Solanke. Yep. I think for those wanting to run through to sort of 34, 35, someone like Antoine Semenyo obviously offers up an alternative to Muniz. There'll be plenty of people who have got Bournemouth assets off the back of the 28 double. If you've got, you're probably holding on to bits. Perhaps those like me with Milos Kerkes are looking not to do so. Uh, for Crystal Palace, the fixtures are pretty grim, bar the 34 double in itself. Their double in 34, I think, is really good. I think if you're free hitting in 34, you're going to have something of them. West Ham at home and Newcastle at home as two home fixtures is reasonable. Uh, Those two sides, West Ham and Newcastle respectively, might have nothing to play for, possibly, in terms of their league campaign. Probably not quite likely, but I still think it's a good double. The problem with Palace is 32 to got City at home, 33 to go to Liverpool. So if you're you're building that way, they're they're like your last fault, basically, I think, Crystal Palace. Three hitters, 34, are going to want some. Pretty confident of that. Quite a few will still have uh, the likes of... Senesai or Semenyo or whatever floating around from the double game week. What's that got to do with Palace? Sorry. That's a good point. Why am I thinking about (laughs) Bournemouth? Because I'm looking at their fixture against Bournemouth. There won't be a lot of Palace ownership knocking about. There'll be a few who've had a bit of Chris Richards enabling. Some people might have Eze, but Michael Elise might be back fit by 34. I think Daniel Munoz will be really popular if fit going into 34 as an attacking wing back now for Palace. If you you own now, you've got to keep for Forest and Bournemouth, bench for City, Liverpool, and then roll him out. Yeah, but if you've got someone like Eze, you want to bench that for like 32, 33. And listen, you can still play that player. Of course you can. I, mean, I think that's obviously dependent on who else but is in your the, squad. The probable point is, if you are heading towards 34, Palace is probably your last fault. Yep. And what you've got to remember at that point is, if you're heading towards 34, and you're well, like, Palace, my entry point for Palace is 34. Yeah, but you might also be thinking, oh, I need to get that third Arsenal player or that third Liverpool player, right? They might end up getting overlooked. For free hitters, I don't think they will be. Um, for Everton, some really good remaining home fixtures. Their run right till the end of the season is not bad, particularly if, you wanna, if you're on wild card. Carrying through an enabler like Jared Bramthwaite at the moment makes perfect sense if you're like without a free hit, for example. We've got Burnley at home, 32. Be very useful. The 34 double obviously includes Liverpool at home, but the first fixture is Forest at home, so that's fine. They've got Brentford at home immediately afterwards in 35. 37, they've got Sheffield United at home. And in between the Brentford and Sheffield United fixture, go to Luton as well in 36, which isn't bad either. So Everton, I think particularly the defensive assets, Brantway, I think Jordan Pickford will be semi-popular yep. for people as well. Um, one to keep an eye on. Liverpool, I've got best up to and including game week 34 
on my ticker. Good fixtures coming up, starting now with Brighton on Sunday. Sheffield United next Thursday obviously looks particularly scary, but that is three days before another trip to Manchester United where they've had difficulties in their last two fixtures. Um, the 34 double is perfectly reasonable, despite it being two away games. 35 to 37. Yeah, I mean, again, Fulham have been good at home. Yep. Everton, it's a local derby. You know they're going to raise course, the game. Of course, but... It's, there's a lot of narratives in as this. As a Liverpool double game week, is fine. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Two bottom half yeah. table teams, yeah. Uh, well, Fulham might challenge that with the form they're in. Correct. 35 to 37 for Liverpool is fine, but also challenging in comparison to other teams' fixtures, yep. is what I would say. And primarily those teams who then double in 37. So West Ham away 35, Tottenham at home 36, Villa away 37. If you've got like Salah and you're carrying it through that, it's not going to scare you. Just the other teams with the doubles in 37 are going to, they're going to appeal massively. Sheffield United, I think even for those three hitting in 34, people won't want them, despite the fact it's Burnley at home in the first part of that double. I had a look at three hit teams last night and what I think people might favour. And I don't think there'll be a need financially for someone like a James McAtee, yep. unless people are trying to force Haaland in on that free hit, in which case he might be useful as your eighth attacker to sit on the bench. Otherwise, can't see the use for them, unfortunately. For Wolves, after they go to Villa this week, I've got them best for the period of 31 up to 35. Interestingly, they play Luton at home after their double game week. So one you're, you're, you're quite happy to have, I think, in the week afterwards in 35 the run of Burnley away West Ham at home Nottingham Forest away 31 to 33 before the 34 double is fine and the 34 double's not terrible either it's two home games it's Arsenal at home and Bournemouth at home Arsenal at home is obviously very challenging but we have seen our Wolves perform well in some of their more difficult home games this season Bournemouth at home as an alternative fixture is fine for the 37 doublers much is focused on attention from 35 onwards, naturally after the 34 double, but it's certainly a couple that you can invest in at this point as well. I think of the six teams who double in 37, or are likely to at least, Brighton are the least attractive of those six with their fixtures from game week 35. I think with the thinking previously that Brighton-Chelsea would be the odd fixture surge that would go into 35 or 36. For those looking to wildcard then, you would have certainly wanted at least, say, a Pascal Gross. You might have wanted something secure like a Lewis Dunk as an alternative yeah. to a Purvis Estupanan. But now, with them not likely to have that 35, 36 extra fixture, 37 is obviously not going to appeal so much and they're not going to appeal from that wildcard stage. It is still possible that Brighton-Chelsea becomes the odd one out and that will conflict things for those looking to bench boost 37 if that happens we have to assume at this stage that that's unlikely but still a, pro a possibility um, Chelsea I've got from this point best fixtures till the end of the season now they've been unreliable let's say but particularly for the group of people free hitting in 34 and perhaps using their wild card now already used it what a great run that is. They obviously play Arsenal away in 34. So what a great week to free hit and get them out for that yep. week and then use them either side. As I said, I've got them best till the end. The run from 35 as it stands is obviously likely to include two doubles. You're going to want three at that point. And I think if you're wild carding now, you're looking at at least two or probably three subject to what your strategy is. For Manchester City, once they get the Arsenal fixture out of this weekend, I think their fixtures till the end are pretty good. You know what the problem with City is going to be over this period. It's going to be rotation, most likely. Um, but the spacing of the fixtures isn't terrible um, in the sense that even the Luton game in 33, where Haaland's obviously going to be popular for captaincy, the Champions League fixtures fall on the Tuesday before and the Wednesday afterwards. So I think he still plays that game, right? personally. Afterwards, it could get really complicated. City could end up in a scenario where they play Brighton on the Thursday in 34, Forest on the Sunday in 35, Champions League semi on the Wednesday, 36 fixture Saturday, Champions League semi on the Tuesday. Tuesday. It's busy. Arsenal could have a similar schedule yep. over that period as well. Well, they play each other in the semi, so if they both go through... 
the dates of the semis will be the same well, because they've got to get on the pitch at the same time. I mean, what's really stupid is that Sky have put Nottingham Forest, Man City and Tottenham v Arsenal on the Sunday in game week 35. Those fixtures will revert to the Saturday if and or those two teams, Arsenal and City, play on the Tuesday in the Champions League. Right. Should have just been on the Saturday in the first place. They've done this either or situation again. We'll speak about it later on other shows this week. Um, for Manchester United, 34-37 to 37 looks great. Um, United themselves, I think even for free hitters in 34, will be under consideration. The single fixture is Sheffield United at home. 35 is Burnley at home. 36 is Palace away. The double is challenging. Arsenal and Newcastle in 37, if we have to assume that's how it pans out. Yep. But it is two home fixtures. Correct. Newcastle, 35 to 37, great. They play Sheffield United and Burnley in a row. Sheffield United at home, 35. Burnley away, 36. Before Brighton at home as the first part of their double in 37. And finally for Tottenham. It looks horrendous from 33 to 36. Particularly as it's now a blank in 34. But Newcastle away, 33. Still okay for the offensive ones, I think. But doesn't look good as part of a fixture run that then follows with Arsenal at home, 35. Liverpool away, 36. The final two are good in isolation. Forget doubles. Burnley at home, 37. Sheffield United away, 38. That means that whether it's Chelsea or the City game, it goes into 37 or both. The Burnley at home fixture still means that there's enough attractiveness there. But 36, if that proves to be where the Chelsea game goes, your double is Liverpool away and Chelsea away. Not great. And it does mean, I think, that a Chelsea player, i.e. Cole Palmer in brackets, would be the likely captain for game week 36 rather than a Tottenham player under that circumstance. What's your takeaways from all this at this stage? Well, so pretty simple for me, really, because the first thing I did was fire up FPL.team. Shout out, Pete. Use that website if you want to go and figure out so for me, if it's like, what players do I have that have what fixtures is the first port of call to try and figure out. Game week 34, James, I have two doublers. Oof. Which is nothing, right? So at that point, I'm like, all right, that makes it very easy for me to say I can free hit in 34 and I can use it in an aggressive way to load myself up with doublers. My two doublers at the moment are Kelleher, who I don't even know if Alisson may be back by then. Yeah, we're not sure. Yeah, so that's off the table. And Gabriel. Who's flagged right now, Parsonal, but let's assume he's going to be fit. So, for me, that's maybe even one doubler. Plus, I've got a couple of your boys in, Pedro Porro and Sonny. So, not only have I only got one and a half doublers, I've also got two blankers. Yes, I said blankers. So, for me, free hit in 34 suddenly becomes very straightforward. And if I decide that that's what I'm going to do, then I can work around it and figure out my strategy towards the end. Uh, if we get to game week 37, I have more doublers for game week 37, but nothing, not, not enough is what I would say. You've still got wild card, right? I've got wild card. So for me at the moment, uh, I would work towards wild carding 36 or wild carding in 37, one or the other. The only reason I'd wild card in 36 is to load up on more Tottenham Chelsea for a double double. Back to back doubles. Yeah, it could still be 35. Yeah, exactly. So around. You don't then, know at this stage. Um, but I've already got three between. So <clears throat> the other alternative is if I was to say I was to go this week and <clears throat> Alex Moreno has been annoying me for quite a while, I could get Malo Gusto in. I know it's a bit risky, but I could get Malo Gusto in. Particularly if I need him for a bench boost more than I need him for anything else. Yes, I know Reese James might be fit, but also know that Reese James will play about two games of football before he's not fit anymore. Um, so that could be potentially the way I go. So for me at the moment, it looks like, yeah, free hit 34 because of the fact that I've got blankers and no doublers seems very obvious. I'm could not going to wild card in 34. Can you tell us your bus team as it is now? 34. No, now, for this week, for oh, game week 30. Let's go back. Game week 30. Uh, yes, I, ha I will be playing Kelleher at Brighton at home. Yeah. Assuming he's fit. If not, it's going to be Ariola. Yeah. 
Got Wolves at home for Moreno. If he plays, yeah. Dowerty, Tottenham away. Yeah. Porro, Luton at home. Yeah. Uh, my midfield would be... Bowen. Yeah. Newcastle Palmer. away. Yeah. Uh, that's Burnley at home. Yeah. Luton at home for Sonny. Yeah. And Foden, Arsenal at home. Yeah. Benching Socek. Yeah. Newcastle yep. away. Standard, yeah. sense. And then I've got uh, Morris, Orland. Watkins. So my bench should be Moreno. Uh, no, sorry. My bench should be Foden, Lascelles, Gabriel. I think you mean Suchek, not Foden. Sorry. Suchek, Lascelles, Gabriel. A big taste he's come back into the reckoning for you, isn't he? With Sven Botman, unfortunately, out for the rest of the year. Yeah. So he, he can sit through. That's why I would have sold, I'll sell Moreno for uh, Gusto if I decide that that's the path I want to go down with a Chelsea defender. So... Okay. I'm all right for this week, I would say. It's nothing special. It doesn't fill me You've with You've got craziness. Palmer already, haven't you? And I've got Sun and I've got Porro. What about Salah? That's the thing. I've got, I've got some money in the bank as well um, to, to get to Salah. How I haven't much? thought about it yet. Uh, you're asking me a question that I don't know the answer to, James. <laughs> Does he not tell you at the top? Even at I'm FPL on team. team. Oh, yeah, he even uh, tells you at the top on FPL if team. If you go to FPL team, I've got 4.6 in the bank. It tells you on FPL Right. Team. So you could go like Foden to Salah, yeah? Yeah. N- close. You'd be close, probably. You're probably just but short. But if I went Moreno to Gusto, I could definitely go Foden to Salah. Uh, I presume you, that would be a minus four. Yeah. Whether okay. I do it this week or not, or spread the transfers to be confirmed. I definitely want Salah for the Sheffield United at home game in 31. So, Okay. Um, I think... How teams are set now is part dependent on what's gone previously, right? So 29 was a bit of a disaster class for everybody, whether it was free hit or not. But obviously those who've carried through, subject to how much you have of certain teams, is going to define how you're sitting now. So, for example, i got Treble Villa at home to Wolves, Treble Tottenham at home to Luton, and don't think it, it doesn't look too bad. If you've come out and you've got Treble Luton away to Tottenham and... Perhaps yep. treble West Ham away to Newcastle and stuff. You're probably not looking so good. So there's definitely going to be a camp of people who feel like they've got to wild card now. And I get that. You're, I think you're probably borderline. You're probably borderline. Board well, you're playing like now. Doughty and Morris like a, a, a way to Tottenham. But I do right? have one free. Right? Yeah, and we've already said you might be taking a minus four for Salah. Yeah, but <laughs> and I could, so, and I could sell Doughty that. this week. Um, instead of Moreno, if I was looking shorter term. It doesn't got, matter because you play Gusto over Doughty, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly with Burnley and then in two weeks, Sheffield United. Yeah. I'll tell you where I'm at in terms of my thinking. Chip so, usage, specifically. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and where I'm at. So for me this week, I'm, I'm bust with I'm basically currently 10 players playing at home. So... As said, Treble Villa, Torres, Bailey, Watkins at home to Wolves. Treble Tottenham, Porro, Madison, Son. Double City of Holland, Foden at home to Arsenal. Tony at home to Manchester United. De Bravka at home to West Ham. The 11th player, I think, will become Malagusto, who would also be Burnley at home. And I'm quite comfortable at the moment in terms of my idea, taking a minus four to put Cole Palmer in there as well. And it would probably be... I'll him. Probably over Sun, yeah, would be the current thinking for me, actually. I've got the armband on Sunny at the moment. Now, that means... I think we'll come back to that. Um, well, to be honest, it's kind of what I defined last week. I don't like captain a player where I don't know where he's going to play. Okay. And I don't know if he's going to play up front or on the left. If I knew he was going to play up front, yeah, Sunny. But I think there's every chance for Charleston to come back in. And it could be that he plays on the left and still goes off because Luton, are, are unlike the other teams near the bottom of the league, don't get me wrong, but I know exactly what I get from Cole Palmer and it's a great fixture as well. Um, that leaves me, of course, no Liverpool this week. I have to suck my medicine and go, no Salah. But I'm looking at then another minus four in 31 to remove Watkins away to Manchester City, remove Sun at West Ham, get Salah and Nunes for Sheffield United at home. I can see me rolling. That'll also have me with nine players at home in game week 31. Once I put like Gabriel back into my 11. Yes, I'll be without Saka as well for that Luton at home fixture. 32, I'd have a lot of players playing away, but the fixtures aren't bad. Roll through that. Game week 33, uh, two free transfers, probably on two Brentford players. Something like Bumo and Reggion for Sheffield United at home. Free hit 34, wildcard 35. That's... Almost certain for me now with what I've got 
what works for me doesn't necessarily work for you. And what's beautiful at this stage, unlike in other seasons, um, is there's definitely diversity in terms of how people are going to go and play this. Yeah, I agree. There's a few, like, I look at, the, the, I look at specific fixtures where I'm like, okay, how am I going to navigate this? Like Luton at home for Arsenal in game week 31, I look at that and it fills me with fear. But also, that's either side of City, Brighton. Yep. And then they've got Villa at home, but that's either side of two games against Bayern Munich. Yep. I'm like, okay, so uh, just that one fixture, sandwiched between five or six really hard fixtures, I might just have to take my medicine. Whereas I look at, would I rather go Saka or Salah? Because Salah's got Sheffield United at home, but then they've got Atlanta, Atalanta, pronounce it well, such in the in, in the Europa League, they're less stress around that. They got Palace at home in between as well. So I would prioritise Liverpool over Arsenal for that period up to 34, and I'd actually just go to Arsenal in 34. And I have to watch the Luton game from behind the sofa, so be it, you know. You don't, you're watching a different game, watch City against Villa. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Liverpool takes priority for me over Arsenal in the short, shorter term. Uh, whereas Arsenal I can go back to in, in game 34, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I, in terms of some extra listening, I highly recommend last night's Who Got the Assist, actually. I listened to FPL Pricey and, and Tom Cantor on that. And they're kind of split in terms of their ideas. They have a real bounce back in terms of their ideas. Yep. I think the longer it goes on, Tom leads into to Sam's idea of, of what he wants to do, which is, is similar to my thinking. The absolute clincher of what's changed for me over these last couple of weeks is Manchester United beating Liverpool in the FA Cup. It's changed the game massively. The absolute biggest thing for me now is wildcarding in game week 35 into treble Manchester United at home to Sheffield United. Uh, sorry, at home to Burnley. And treble Newcastle at home to Sheffield United knowing they both have a good 36 fixture and both going to double in 37. That's the biggest thing for me. And spreading around that, it's just Chelsea, Tottenham, Manchester City. I spoke about this briefly on my stream Friday and the, the confirmation became clearer once the fixtures came out on Saturday as well. Me bench boosting in game week one was a mistake. It's hindsight. We shouldn't necessarily call yeah, it a mistake. I, I it's hindsight. But play it your way. But. For me... The absolute ease with the unbelievable bench boost team that people can put together in 37 by wildcarding in 35, which leaves fantastic fixtures, in my opinion, in 35, 36 and 38 as well, is so easy. All you got to do is take out Salah. That's it. Okay. And it's so easy. And you don't even necessarily have to do that, by the way. You could definitely... Say Tottenham ended up with a treble game week in 37. You could definitely go Salah 35 to 36 and then go Salah to just, Son in 37, yeah, as an example. Yeah, defenders or whatever around. Yeah, it. and yeah. All, you, all you need to do is just make sacrifice somewhere else where rather than, oh, I can punt in on Rashford because I can afford it, you go Garnacho. Well, rather than Trippi, I'll have to cut down to Lascelles, who I know is going to play now that Botman's injured. That's it. Just small little sacrifices to even keep Salah yeah. as a part of that if you want to. Having looked at it, I mean, my bench is going to score a stupid amount, I think, in game week 37, and I won't be able to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be able to use it, but it, I, I wouldn't even... I, Do rather the points were there on the, the bench? The thing is as well, right. yeah, it's true. If, if Chelsea Tottenham goes into 36, because Tottenham play Arsenal in 35, and I don't think you really want to play, say, treble Tottenham in 35... The, the advantage I would have in terms of, well, you can bench uh, your likes of uh, Nunes or Sackers and carry these players through. No, nah, because it's probably benching a bit of Tottenham in 35, I should imagine, and maybe a bit of Chelsea away to Villa as well. So the advantage I'd have in terms of keeping other players from other teams who don't double, I don't think it'd be there. I, I, I can very conceivably see me wildcard in 35 with 15 players across the two Manchester teams, Chelsea, Tottenham and Newcastle. And perhaps reversing that back where, yes, maybe it would keep Salah for, say, 35, 36 and then, and then move it on or keep Saka, for example. And it'll be easy enough that in 38 you can make two free transfers and buy an Arsenal player and buy a Liverpool player or buy yep. something else if you want to punt something else. Yep. See who's got what to play for that, when you get to that point. That now, with Manchester United and Newcastle doubling in 37, is what's changed this massively for me. Because I think if you're wildcarding now... I think you particularly want some of Newcastle and 
and Chelsea, I think, to carry you through to the end. Um, if I was wildcarding now, I'd still strongly be thinking about free hitting 34 rather than doing it the other way around. Because when I look at the fixtures either side of the teams who double, I just think for the guys in 37, it looks it looks so much better. So yep. th- these are the fixtures in 33 for the teams who double in 34. So Arsenal have Villa at home, Bournemouth have United at home, Palace go to Liverpool, Everton go to Chelsea. Liverpool have Palace at home is good. Sheffield United, Brentford away is irrelevant. Wolves not in a forest away. It's a little bit of a mix. But then come out to 35, if you're looking at Arsenal players at Tottenham, Liverpool players at West Ham, um, Crystal Palace players away to Fulham, and you know that Newcastle and Manchester United have got those other fixtures in 35, plus there's others obviously heading towards a double city, you've got a good fixture away to Forest. Yep. You're not going to like looking at that so much. Whereas for the teams who double in 37, this is their fixtures either side. So in 35... It's, I'm just going to read them all out. Bournemouth away, Villa away, Forest away, Burnley at home, Sheffield United at home, Arsenal at home. Those are the six fixtures, 35. 36, if it's not a double for Chelsea Tottenham, is Villa at home, West Ham at home, Wolves at home, Palace away, Burnley away, and Liverpool away is for Tottenham. But the other five are good. Really good. And even for 38, Manchester United at home, Bournemouth at home, West Ham at home, Brighton away, Brentford away, Sheffield United away. Yeah. It's still good afterwards that, that as well. 35 to 38 run, if you wildcard in 35, 36, whatever your flavour is, is easily manageable with one or two transfers, each, one, one transfer each week. To each it's, group. it's conceivable you could get to 38 and you go, yeah, sure, I want the likes of Saka Salah, but you might be going, my team still looks great. Still too good, yeah. Uh, that, yeah, I agree with you. It makes perfect sense. That, if, that running from 35 onwards if you have a wild card, is easy enough to navigate. I mean, particularly in the case of Chelsea Tottenham, who are the, the two teams, if they double in 36 or 35 as well, they're the two teams you're probably going to want to go treble of the most. Like with United, you might just want to go say Onana and Hoyland, for example. They're the two you definitely, if it's double-double, you're definitely going to want treble of each. And then what final day, they've got Bournemouth at home and Sheffield United away respectively. We, we want to get rid of it. If you've got Newcastle players, and I think if you wildcard 35, you're going straight into Sheffield United and Burnley, never yep. mind the double in 37. What Brentford away is going to scare you. For offensive United assets, Brighton away? No. For Brighton assets, have you got offensive United at home scary? No. City, West Ham at home, 38. Dangerous, that game. Yeah. I mean, that's why I think for me, if you've got a free hit left, for me, 34 weeks makes way more sense than 37 just because of how easy that is on the two sides. And yep. it's not to say even if on the other side of 34, it's particularly bad. Mm-hmm. It's just this for the teams who double in 37 is particularly good. I think as well, by the way, if Chelsea Tottenham does go into 36, there is a case to say that's, that's even bench boostable in comparison to 37. Yeah, well, is, I mean, the thing is, with the likes of Chelsea and Tottenham, there are players there where previous seasons you might have been like six, seven, eight million pound players. There's four to five to six million pound players. It's no problem. That make it so much easier to have for the bench boost where you're not looking at the dregs. You're not looking at uh, fodder for the bench, to be honest with you. So yeah, I I agree with you totally. Obviously, everybody's in uh, quite different situations with, with the chips that they do have left. What would you do in the situation that someone's just got a wild card left and no other chips I'd I'd be heading to Liverpool first then Arsenal and then last Palace and then I'd be wild carding in 35 I think yeah under, Try, trying under, to navigate under, and get to 35 to see you through the end of the season there's not enough gain from 30 to 34 to wild card early you'd rather save it and steam into the double you're talking 35. about just having the wild card only well when, when it's useful I guess yeah yeah, uh, if you haven't got the free hit, then I think, yeah, after 35. Yeah. You can still, uh, you know, look at Chelsea and Newcastle players now, but I think under that circumstance, you're making the best of 34. And there are teams with singles that are fine, right? So particularly Newcastle, where it's Palace, okay. We spoke about Man United at home, Sheffield United is fine. You might be defined by how much Tottenham you've got, but I think you're, you're just sacrificing that. 
probably if you're heading towards that route. I mean, if I just had wild card left and nothing else, I don't know how you get the best of 34 and 37. So dead end to 34 and wild card straight wild card off it. Out of it. The other yeah. end, I think. Uh, obviously, if people have got free hit, they're going to want to use it in one of the doubles. We've got no blank game. I don't count that Tottenham game week 34 as a blank. Uh, so you're not using the free hit to cover off a, a, a blank game week now. You can use it aggressively. Um, and like we said, 34 is probably the better option. 37, if for whatever reason you're really well set for, for 34. Yeah, I mean, it depends how you land as well. I mean, for those who have just free hit, there's a case to say as well that they'll, they'll be running not bad, I think, for for 34. They'll, there's every chance they'll have like treble Arsenal. Perhaps right. they've already gone back into Salah, might have like Kelleher which, and Bradley. And we, we don't really know at this stage if they're going to be good or bad assets. Might have a bit more Chelsea as well. Probably got more Bournemouth heading towards 34 if you've just free hit it as well because of... Obviously, the 28 the double. double. Went, yeah, yeah. There'll be plenty of people listening or watching this going, I'm set good for 34. That's cool. Like, crack on. Absolutely, obviously. Um, and I think there's definitely a number of people who've just free hit will have to head that way because they've just used it as well, right? So this comes back to the point that made back in January was if 34 ends up being big, you're going to want three different teams. 29, 34, 37. And across all 20 teams, the only team that's been useful in two of them, really, will be Tottenham. 29 and 37. That's it. Yep. Otherwise, you're looking at completely different teams across those three game weeks in terms of what you wanted. I think if I had everything left in terms of chips, um, I would free hit 34. I would just run through the next four weeks. I'd wildcard 35. I'd triple captain Palmer in 36 if that's how it lands. And I'd bench boost 37. Yep. So I'd literally be using them four in a row, 34 to 37. Yep. But that's dependent on how you set. I realise there's a lot of teams now who are like, I've got a wild card now. You know, no Salah, no Palmer. Um, perhaps not even got Haaland. Mm. Like, shit, I've got to fix up my team. I get that. By yep. all means, wild card. Then the only difference would be, rather than wild card in 35, I'd still wild card to set up to free hit in 34. That would be my plan. Be going quite heavy Chelsea, Newcastle now, and I'd be looking to work Tottenham in at the end. Agreed. Um, for people without the triple captaincy, that's, I think that's a lot of people. Yes, that would be the majority, and I've got all the rest. I think it's probably free hit thirty four, wild card thirty five, bench boost thirty seven. Yeah, I said it could even land at thirty six. Looks nice. I looked at a, that, that's my I, current strategy. I looked at I a say. wild card thirty five where. My bench in 36 would probably be treble Manchester United and a Manchester City defender. Manchester United have Palace away for the record and City have Wolves at home. But then those those players will double in 37 yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Would, I, would I bother, even if it was a really good fixture, I think I'd, I'd gamble on the double, to be honest with you, too much upside. that That is my strategy at the moment. The only difference there could be wildcarding in 36 instead of 35, but... Dependent on where Chelsea Tottenham drops and what the rest of my team looks like. No bench boost left. Again, personally, I'd be looking free hit 34. Uh, wild card 35 and then triple captaincy. Your choice between 36 and 37. Holland, we think obviously in 37 now will be Fulham away and Tottenham away. Mm. No free hit left. I'd be heading towards 34. Wild card 35. Triple captain 36. Bench boost 37. I think if only bench boost and free hit left, you could look at doing it either way round because obviously right. you're not using the wild card. And again, those who are set quite well for 34 are going to be going, yep, well, it's better for me at this stage to head to 34 and free hit 37. It just makes me nervous about those 35, 36, 38 fixtures right. on the other side. But then you're heading right. on a completely different path. You're holding Salah, you're holding Saka probably and stuff like this and it might well pay off for you. Um, I think if only bench boost and triple captaincy left, again, pick your poison in terms of 34, 37. That's where your bench ends up. Depending on how you're set right. now, right? Um, bench boost and wild card only. I think wild card 35, bench boost 37. Yep, makes sense. Free hit and triple captaincy only. I think free hit 34, triple captaincy 36, 37. Free hit and wild card only. Again, I think the two together. Free hit 34, wild card 35 to set for the run in. Triple captaincy and wild card only. Then I think triple captaincy 34 or 37, wild card 35. It's definitely a case to say 34 under that circumstance. 
might be best. Um, in terms of triple captaincy, in terms of left, I've listed a, a load to consider. There are a few in single game weeks. So Salah against Sheffield United in 31. Haaland against Luton, 33. I think final day, 38. Haaland against West Ham if he's going for the golden boot. Yep. Salah at home to Wolves. Could be similar. Son at Sheffield United. In terms of the doubles, I think 34 Salah would be best. Fulham and Everton away. Yep. But Saka, Wolves away and Chelsea at home offers a nice alternative. 35, if it landed that way for Palmer, Villa away, Tottenham at home, would be better than Tottenham. And I think similarly, if Chelsea, Tottenham goes into 36, West Ham at home and Tottenham at home looks even better for Cole Palmer. Yeah, I, it looks all right, but it's two London derbies. Not. Yeah, but if you end up, what you've got to think is, if you end up free hitting 34 and bench boosting 37, you're going to look at one of these other weeks, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two Chelsea home fixtures, Tottenham, West Ham is reasonable it's, with it's this fine. fella's consistency, yeah. mate. 37, I think probably Hall and Best, Fulham and Tottenham away. Sun, Burnley at home, Man City at home, an alternative. But it could be Burnley at home, Chelsea away, Man City at home. Under that circumstance, for Cole Palmer as well... You're potentially then looking at a circumstance of Forest away, Tottenham at home and Brighton away would also be good. Um, so there's there's definitely alternatives in the weeks left. I think if you're not free hitting or wild carding around, I think personal preference would probably be Mo 34, I think. Fulham and Everton away. Yeah. I think of the if you've got your choice of everything left. But it's very much in terms of where it goes from here going to depend on where you are. For me, it just looks so straightforward. I think I've only got one double of 34 currently. Oh, wow. I think okay. it's Gabriel. So, yeah, like me. Oh, oh I've got Kirkes as I've, a second. And your Kirkes is my Kelleher. So, yeah, I think for that, I, it makes it particularly I easy. I struggle to see, because of the run from 35 to 38, I struggle to see the bench boost of 34 to use the free hit in 37. To because of the fixtures that those who double in 37 have in 35, 36 and 38. Yep. It just feels so much easier the other way around. Now, of course, if you're wild carding now and free hitting 34, you still want Salah, you yep. still want Saka, you still want Gabriel, you can still put these guys in. I looked at a wild card this week where I probably wouldn't have Saka. Right. But I'd, I'd buy him in 31. You'd probably keep Sun for this week, go Sun Sa uh, Saka in midweek. That's the thing. Always remember, we still do have transfers. transfers to use in between. So it's like make set a plan and then figure out what your uh, alternative solutions might be. There's definitely a group of people for which bench boosting in 34 will will be right rather than 37, and that I'm okay with that. I think there's certain things that make me nervous about 34. I think I highlighted that Chelsea have the best fixtures from now to the end of the season. They've got just Arsenal away in 34 and you're not going to want to sell their players on either side so what are you bench boosting with what like Petrovic Gusto and Palmer away to Arsenal not ideal <sighs> no and the Tottenham players you're probably going to want either side don't play I think there's more pros for the other route than 34 those who land nice for 34 good luck play it your way obviously but I think for many people like me it just looks obvious to do it the other way at the moment I'm free hit 34. For those who obviously don't have a free hit, I think, like I said, target Liverpool first, Arsenal in midweek, be conscious of Chelsea, Newcastle, and then probably a bit of Palace in 34 as well. Then you need to switch your attentions back the other way. And you don't want to get caught with your pants short 35. Of course, if you still have the wild card left, then just head for 34 and wild card 35, I think. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, we've been through a lot there in terms of uh, what people's strategies may be. I'm hoping that as we've been going through it, people can say, right, that's me. You know, it's like, okay, I yep. figure out that's relevant to me. Yep. Not everything we've been through is relevant to everybody. No. So hopefully in the way that we've highlighted teams or highlighted strategies, you can dip in and pick out the bit that's relevant to you. However, we also have some questions in on Twitter, James, which may be similar to how other people are, are set up. Yeah. We should cover some of them off, shouldn't we? Go for we? it, mate. I think we'll do that first and then we'll talk about what we've got left for the rest of the week, being that it's a short week. We've got Easter weekend here in the UK. Starting with Mark Jones. Well, Suj promised to listen now. Yes. 
<laughs> it's game time now, as I replied to him. So, yes. Have you decided off the back of what's yeah, been yeah. discussed Free what you're 34, doing? Yeah, yeah. Free 34. Yeah. Wild card 35, 36. More than likely 35. And I then ju- Benchbury 37. Why would you miss out on... on the Newcastle two, Man yeah, United yeah. fixtures yeah. in 35. Because Newcastle have been a bit flaky and Man United are temperamental, but... It's Sheffield United and Burnley. I'm it's two best fixtures, so mate. True. It is, yeah. yeah. It's hard. E- even if it is, like, and I've been... I've slammed Garnacho from time to time. It's, it's a no-brainer to get him in, particularly if I want a bench boost in 37 as well. At his price, it's a shoo-in, isn't it, Garnacho? Uh, assuming he's still in the team. Um, well, I put together a wildcard draft in 35 that didn't have him in it. Okay, but that's probably because you could afford even better. No, but I mean, if you look at this midfield five as 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 difference, and this is with about two million in the bank, Son, Richarlison, Palmer, yeah. which if it's double double, Foden and Gordon. Okay, I get that. You still got trouble, Man United elsewhere. So it's like double defensive, Anana and Dallo to go with like Hoyland. Hoyland, yeah. Still got this has got Isak and Trippier. This is what I mean. You can make sacrifices. You don't need to put Garnacho in that. You could do. You can go, oh, I don't want Foden rotation or I want to go, um, I don't know, double Tottenham defence or something like that instead and then squeeze Garnacho in. Yeah, you can. You can squeeze Rashford into this. Uh, you know, just go Rashford instead of Foden. There's different ways of doing this. FPL Quinner, at what rank do you think you would go against Erling Haaland on wildcard? About nine million. I think, let, let me sum it up like this. I think one of the big debates at the moment is Salah versus Haaland. I get that. Um, and I think there's kind of like, when can you do without? So you could definitely do without Haaland this week. Doing without Salah in 31 at home in Sheffield United is going to feel particularly scary. 32, you could possibly do without Salah. I've even looked at flipping that, by the way. Going Sun, uh, Salah, Salah, Sun, Sun, Salah. I've looked at that. that, that I, I could even possibly do that with how I'm set and just ignore everything else. Um... I think the 31 to the 35 period, and you might as well include 30, if you're looking at, sorry, it's a 34 period. If you group that, you don't want to be without Mo. But within that includes Haaland playing Luton in 33. Right. The end bit, I don't think you want to be without Haaland. Definitely those fixtures at the end, which is fine for Mo. West Ham away, uh, Tottenham at home, Villa away, they're fine. But can you do without him considering what others have got? Yeah, you can. You won't want to do over Haaland. So one of the questions I've, I've seen regularly floating about is if you can only have one to the end of the season, right, scrap that. It's Salah in the immediate and then it's Haaland later on. David Hunter says, is dead ending to 34 with optimal 11 doublers, wildcard 35, bench boost 37 and saving free hit for 38, a dumb idea. Why would it be dumb? If you've got the best team for 34 with 11 doublers, don't, you don't need to use your free hit. So then you can save it for the final game week and have a bit of fun in game week 38. I would, uh, under that circumstance, I'd, I'd look at considering a free hit in 31. Okay. Where you can have like, uh, and again, you might, you might already be really set because you might have treble Arsenal against Luton and treble Liverpool against Sheffield United. If you are, then forget that. But if you're not and you're heading that way, it might be something possibly to consider as an alternative. Um, the problem with that is, we'd already said, look how the 37 teams land in 38. Are you, are you going to need to? Yep. So it's quite stupid. No, not at all. Because what we can't see at the moment, and there'll definitely be people in the you don't know if those teams in 37 are going to have something to play for when you bench push. No, you're right. Don't. But let me also tell you something about those six teams that double in 37. The only one left with European commitments is Manchester City. The other five are fine. Right. Manchester United might have an FA Cup final to prepare for. He don't rotate anyway, Ten Hag. You know what the team's going to be. Tottenham won't rotate much. You might have little bits, you know, like Johnson comes in and out or Werner, but you're not going to doubt your likes of Son and Madison and Porro and even Udogi. There's no doubt on that. Chelsea, your likes of Palmer, no problem. If you know what the goalkeeper and defensive situation is, fine. If Nkunku's not back, Jackson will get a good run. Newcastle won't rotate. There's no reason for them to. Yep. So it's just more well, if they're they fit. don't ever have enough fit players. That's the problem. So uh, you could have for challenge. that run in thirty-five. What I've looked at is Trippier, Gordon, and Isak. 
Yep. And admittedly, Callum Wilson might be back by then. There's things that can change the situation. That, for me, is also why it's better to wild card later rather than now. Because I think with the now, you make sacrifices where you go, I'm going to go Lascelles rather than Trippier. I'm going to go Garnacho rather than maybe being able to go Rashford or even Bruno Fernandes at the end. That gives you more possibilities at the end, whereas now you have to think more about balance, right? Because you're trying to still fit in Salah, Saka and stuff like that, which is perfectly reasonable. So, yes, there could be more rotation at the end. I think particularly for Man City, sure. But then you're leaving it as late as possible. And I think you can always bin. If you're that, if you're that scared going into 30, you're still going to want Haaland. But if you're that scared of having other Man City players, then don't go there. Leave them till last. Rather than perhaps fixing in a couple more Tottenham players in 37 or 36, fix in to leave your Man City information a little bit more and just wildcard just with, Hoy- with Haaland. That then, like I said, you could go rather than Foden. Go Rashford. There's different things you can do with it. A lot of questions here that we've covered off, James, are like, I've got this and this left, so what should I do? We've talked about strategies for all of that. I think the one that we probably spent the least amount of time talking about um, is around people that are wildcarding now in Game Week 30, Game Week 31. So a few questions around sort of, um, let's have a look here. We've got uh, FPL Gills, for example, what difference would your wildcard 30 team have if you had no bench boost left? Um, or well, other like, people well, talking like about <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of people talking about bench boosting in thirty thirty one and saying, are we going to overlook some single game week players for the future, like Ollie Watkins or Salah or Saka, because we're going to be too focused on who has a double or what have you? What are your thoughts on on that? I mean, uh, Cheeto Chip, would it be gr- would it be great to get your thoughts on a wild card thirty versus thirty one? If I was planning for thirty one. Is there any disadvantage to going 30 instead and bringing it forward? It's going to depend on your set, right? So my plan was coming up to this was to wildcard 31 because I knew about the flip of, say, Liverpool and Arsenal's fixtures, but it just worked so much better for me to free hit in, in 34. Therefore, the wildcard 31 becomes not quite so required from that extent, and I've landed not too badly. There's definitely people who have landed badly and are going to want a wildcard now 31. So... In terms of which one's better, it's going to be looking at your team this week. I don't think there's any major advantage to waiting. If, you're, if your team's going to look okay this week and okay 31, you'll probably get on with it rather than wait. But it's going to be a, a select few of people. If you're like me and you've got treble Tottenham at home to Luton this week, well, that looks a lot better than West Ham away in midweek, doesn't it? It just, it just does. Similarly, if you've got treble Villa, you've got Wolves at home this week, you've got Man City away in midweek. Right, that's me. Six between Tottenham and Villa. It doesn't look as good in midweek for me as it does this week, right? Just doesn't. Um, so I think it probably falls into that line. How do you look for the two weeks? I'll tell you what I did look at, Serge. I didn't look at one without a bench boost, but I looked at what I would do if I was wild carding if I didn't have a free hit chip left. Because that's awkward. Yep. You're trying to get a team together for 34 and yeah. three weeks before. Yeah. So I'll tell you what I went with, and this is where it comes back to making sacrifices. So I looked at this. Keepers, Anana and Pickford. So Pickford, obviously, double 34. Anana, obviously, for the running at the end. Yep. Everton's fixtures are also pretty good across the board. Yep. In defence, Gabriel, because I think you'd want to keep some Arsenal. No doubt about that. Malo Gusto is the Chelsea choice at the moment. Big tasty Jamal Lascelles, because the Newcastle's run all the way through. Destiny Doggy of Tottenham to have a Tottenham primarily in place for the end, but it also would be useful over the next few game weeks. And that was because you couldn't afford Porro? I could, actually, okay. but a situation might manipulate where I think it's worth the saving at okay. this moment. Okay. And Chris Richards of Crystal Palace is the third. Okay. Who's a really cheap defender, right? It's 3.9 or 4.0. 4.0, I think, now, but great for the double, right? Midfield... I think everybody wants a midfield five at the moment of ideally Salah, Palmer, Foden, Son, Saka. That's sort of the dream midfield five. I set this up to cut without Saka, but that would be Son to Saka in 31. The fifth midfielder, um, you could flip a coin really between Garnacho and Gordon. I put Garnacho there at the moment because I thought that was better one to carry as a singular in 34. Okay. For Sheffield United at home. At home, yep. And in front three, at the moment, I went Haaland, Isak, and Solanke. 
So there's balance. So there's one there for the end in Isak and the good fixtures now. Solanke, really good run up until 34 as well. And you can switch that to Rasmus Hoyland or did you have triple Man United in there? No, double. No, Bernardo two and none. So you can, so what's you in can here, sl- flip Solanke to Rasmus Hoyland when so you feel like it. On this, if you look at the, the teams doubling in 37, there's no Brighton, but there's two from each of the other five. So there's Gusto and Palmer, Foden and Haaland, Lascelles and Isak, Anana and Garnacho, Udogi and Son. Yep. Now across this path, you need to cut some more Tottenham, like I said, Son to Saka, and then come back, back again. Later. But you're setting that up. And obviously in this, you've got bits of Liverpool, Arsenal, Palace, couple of Everton for the double and their fixtures. That's what I looked at as doing. But it's definitely stuff missing. Wolves, really good run, 31 to 35. You just ignored them, I think. Because you wouldn't know where to go. You'd eight Nori, maybe. Could There's Kilman. Just no need. Huang, we this don't. Feels like no need. Neto's out for the season. Cunha's not fit yet. Huang, we don't know if he's going to make 34. Avoid. Mm. Yeah. Good, good. Cool. Well, James, before we do the last question of the show, which will be right at the end, uh, what do we have left for the rest of the week for people? Um, tomorrow, People's Poll podcast. Uh, the vote is live. You have a choice of three topics for that podcast. Um, Liverpool and Manchester United's respective search of uh, Michael Edwards and Dan Ashworth to their upstairs team. Why are these deals so important? Dan Ashworth's on gardening leave from Newcastle. Liverpool have brought Edwards back. Have a look at why those two people are so important to those two clubs. Nottingham Forest minus four. Their own four-point hit. Is it fair? Discussion of why it's minus four. And if it's fair, and the third option will be um, TV fixture scheduling, a little bit more understanding and background in terms of what what goes on behind the scenes. And that's been a hot topic this week. Like for me, they've fucked it again with the fixtures, but I also understand that there are so many pieces to the puzzle, yeah, like yeah. the police, um, the clubs themselves that TV. get forgotten about, other events in certain cities. Talk about what comes about in terms of TV fixture scheduling, if you want to discuss that. It won't be best FPL assets relatable. It will just be a discussion about announcing fixtures. Wednesday, Sky Fantasy Football. Thursday's Clash of Correspondence. He's not in a forest versus Crystal Palace with Mark Southerns and Rory McLaughlin Dowd. Rory will be the first correspondent on of all seven who double in 34 between now and 34. That's in place. I can confirm all 20 correspondents will be on again between now and the end of the season. And the nice. six 37 doublers will be on between 35 and 37 over that period as well. Um, Friday, I'm not doing anything because it's good Friday. It is. Um, although I will be doing something for patrons on Friday, uh, late in the evening. Uh, for patrons this week, Q&A today. Nice. Uh, tomorrow, Fantasy Challenge. I, have no, I swear I have no idea what this is about, but we're going to discuss it on Patreon tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday is Tottenham. Uh, Thursday, I can't Miff. remember uh, what's on Thursday. Differential show. If show. We'll, exactly do the, we'll do the game with yeah. 30 preview on Thursday because we're not doing content on Friday. On Friday, I'm going to do a team news stream 8 o'clock in the evening. That will be for advanced tier patrons, intermediate plus tier patrons and basic plus tier patrons. So we'll convert it from a team news stream into part Ask James stream as well. Tidy. Uh, if you want access to all that Patreon content, you know where to go. Patreon.com forward slash Planet FPL, a oh. couple of months left of the season. Why not sign up? One more thing as well. No no content next Monday either. Yes, because bank it's holiday. bank holiday. So, no game with review. Sunday Rubbish. night. Sunday night. Rubbish. Sunday night. We let, it'll be late Sunday Never. night, about 11 yeah, o'clock fun. Sunday night. Is when it will finally go out. But James and I will be recording on Sunday uh, after the games are Straight finished. Straight after City Arsenal, yeah. Uh, to wrap up. This, this game week 30 and get something out for you for, for the bank holiday Monday to listen to as well. Uh, like I was saying, patreon.com forward slash planet FPL. You get access to James's fixed planning spreadsheet, Slack, all the additional shows. And until the end of the season, access to Pete's tool, fpl.team, where you can uh, get the upgraded account, which means you can actually save your transfers and planning rather than having to get back to zero and redo it again and so again. So useful. Uh, I saw some really funny... Uh, so, do you know Fessel on Twitter? Uh, where people send in their weird and wonderful uh, oh, stuff? Yeah. There's at least one tweet from me there every week. Is there? Yeah, oh, yeah. nice. Now I've got to figure out which. I saw one <laughs> which was like from a woman. She said, uh, I'm not sure what to do. I 
picked up my husband's phone, went into the phone gallery, and all it oh, was was screenshots of the FPL teams. Sign up to, to, to Patreon, get into FPL team. You don't need to take those screenshots anymore because they're saved always and forever with your future. You still take the plan. screenshots. Yeah, yeah, you will. You will indeed. Uh, other than that, the last question we had, James. It's going to be stupid. Go on. Was if Jamal LaSalle was as big tasty, <laughs> and he started out as Big Mac and became Big Tasty, which other players could be fast food? Um, he suggested that, Scott McTominay yeah, as Big Mac. Yeah, but com- you have to remember that big, big, tasty Jamal LaSalle's came about not because he looks like a McDonald's or anything yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it's doesn't. not a size it's because, thing. It's because of a bet that you'd buy me a McDonald's if he scored. Correct. Was that was years ago? Very, very. When I owned him in ago. FPL, thought it was a clever idea to buy him rather than John Lundstrom. Whoops. <laughs> um, yeah, that really happened. Um, yeah, I don't know then, because it needs to be, we'd need to have bets. So, oh, I'll buy your KFC if like Scott McTominay scores in a double or something like that, yeah. Uh, I mean, you've got a McChicken sandwich that has to be whatever's really bland. I'm really hungry now. This is the problem. I haven't had enough breakfast today. So now we're talking about food. Hunger's kicking in. Uh, so like if Holland scores in a double, I'll get you a McChicken sandwich. <laughs> Holland can't be a McChicken sandwich. <laughs> Holland's like... He's a robot. Family, no, he's the family bucket at KFC because you're getting everything with that guy like it's everything you're getting like 20 piece chicken is Holland all of it so, so the, the way you've Holland gone with is this a family is feast. you're, you're going to start cussing people out like someone's one hot wing no uh, I was thinking who's the blandest player in the entire like James Milner was got a lot of abuse for being bland you right? used to take penalties he would be the most. No, you used to take penalties nah you're going to be something more like a Moises Casado or something like that aren't you sorry Moises Casado. Uh, all right, we've got to just pick one more. Uh, you know, the McSpicy with the really extra hot sauce. Uh, you Phil won't. Foden. Clayton had that. Phil Foden. No, nah, no, nah, it's got to be someone who gets themselves a lot of yellows and reds unnecessarily. Uh, or just f- fights for no reason. It's always angry for no reason. Um, thanks for bringing that up, by the way. While you yellow think cards. of someone. Yellow cards. The amnesty for the 10th yellow card is the 32nd game not game week 32. For some, that will be game week 32. They need to make it through the 32nd match. So, for example, for Nicholas Jackson, he needs to make it through the Arsenal game in game week 34 to avoid a two-game ban. He is on 10 yellow cards. Uh, it's not on 10 yellow cards. He's on nine yellow cards currently. Bruno Gimmerich has been on nine yellow cards for ages. That's less important. Edson Alvarez, by the way, suspended for West Ham's games with Newcastle and Tottenham. He's picked and up the first leg 10. against Leverkusen, I didn't realise as well. He's suspended for that as well. Sham messaged me off. <laughs> by the way, he's missing the first game against Leverkusen. I did notice on your spreadsheet that you had carefully plotted in the semi-finals for both City and Arsenal and Aston Villa, but you didn't seem to want to pencil in a semi-final for West Ham. Yeah, that's because it's projected fixtures and the projection is you'll get bait. Yeah, <laughs> see... No faith. So no by Leverkusen haven't lost to anyone all season. Seven games. Yes, in yeah. any competition. So they only beat us 4 0 in our pre season friendly, the game before the week before. Friendly the don't matter. Um, it was quite funny. We, there was, uh, this is uh, getting off topic, but let's do it anyway. Uh, go on, finish your yellow cards and I'll tell you. Um, Anyone yeah. that's listening this late just wants to ramble. Just anyway. to make you aware of a few. Rodri, a few might have. He's on eight yellows. Bruno Fernandes, Bruno Gimmerich, both on eight yellows. Anthony Gordon is on eight yellow cards as well. So he'd need to make it through the Tottenham game in game week 33. And why is World Cup 35 better? Because if Anthony Gordon suspended for the for the... Um, Jeff United at home in game week 35 we'll look at someone else Miguel Almiron's um, back in the scene I think those on seven you shouldn't be too worried about Darwin Nunes is also on eight yellow cards at the moment so that could be a dodgy one for those heading towards 34 you know what Darwin's like yes I mean, you, spicy <laughs> just, uh, here's, here's a bit of advice for those wild carding don't have Jackson and Nunes <laughs> one or the other uh, not for the yellow card situation, just for your mental health. And that, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it would be useful having those two. Uh, let's wrap. I uh, thought I listened back to some old episodes. I hadn't listened to Antonio and Callum Wilson's podcast for a little while. And actually, Callum Wilson's no longer on it. Do you know he's on it now in his place? Oh, he's not. Since uh, the start of the year, Tom Kearney has taken over. Oh, really? And he's really good, I would say. Tom Kearney is really okay. interesting to listen to. 
Anyway, when I was listening back, they did an episode after Klopp had announced his retirement. Yep. And uh, they were talking about who would potentially come in. Hold on. It's not announced his retirement, by uh, the way. It's just says leaving, leaving Liverpool. Liverpool. Leaving Liverpool. Um, and obviously, Xavi Alonso's name gets mentioned. And then Antonio made reference to our preseason game. We played Leverkusen the week before the season started. They, they slapped us 4-0. And he said it was that bad that the team had to have a crisis meeting after that. <laughs> um, obviously, it can't have been that bad because we went on the start of the season really well in the end from whatever they regrouped. But he said it was a different level um, when they played that game. They were that confused. That it was like, we shouldn't be getting beaten this badly. So to be fair to your fixture planning spreadsheet, you're probably right. On that note, stay safe. Look after yourselves. Ciao for now. Thanks, everyone. Very importantly. And of course, play it your way. Be nice to each other. Cue music, please. Manchild.